You've seen this storyline play out on this channel before. Abandoned, neglected, forgotten. This one though, it tops them all. When we started posting videos, there were three projects. The most impractical one of the three is the only one that gets used regularly. Who even knows what happened to this one after Carrington pulled the plug on this project? And then there's the FD, which has only seemed to have gone in the wrong direction. Yes, it's a problem and we are working on it, but there's only one way for us to move past our procrastinating tendencies and we have to dig up the past. Quite literally, there are parts of this car all around the shop. We have to go find them starting with the storage unit, which happens to be just right outside. Unfortunately, my wife had an accident, not her fault, with our family SUV. And well, I just can't bring myself to get rid of this thing. I haven't been able to fix it yet. So I had to make use of it while I was out here in the parking lot. And now the fun begins. Rear strut bar, I believe, so that can go back on the car. Front brace already powder coated, that can go on the car. Brake booster, needs to be powder coated. Under body panels. The wheels, the brakes, the seats, and the interior panels with the motor sitting over here tucked in the corner. But really what we need to do is just start putting stuff on the car. And of course what I meant is we have to take it further apart. One area of the car where most of the hard work is already figured out is the rear end. I was able to spend some time on this over the past year and what isn't replaced with brand new components has been serviced as best as possible. New bushings, OEM pillow balls, the spindles have been upgraded with new wheel bearings. If it was able to be replaced, I went ahead and did it. The Explorer 88 rear end has completely been going through lots of Ford racing goodies in there the reason we have the entire rear end taken back apart is so we can get this rear subframe powder coated with a fresh gloss black the Ronin 88 rear subframe mount is weld in so I put everything together so that Josh could go ahead and take care of all of the welding on this there's plenty of reinforcement to spread out the load one other area over the past year that I was able to spend some time on is the underside of the car here. There was plenty of cleaning and degreasing that needed to be done from 20 plus years of road grime and then a fresh coat of black undercoating. I needed to get the car back to a rolling state for our friend Tim up at Industry Garage to go ahead and paint the engine bay, but that also served as a good opportunity to see where we have some clearance issues. Because the rear end uses a Ford 88 that was obviously never designed to go in this car, we are gonna have to clearance just a little bit. And that brings us to our area that needs the most attention. The front end here, we have a brand new subframe, new eccentric bolt, but the rest of the suspension corners are going to need some attention similar to what we did in the rear end we have all new bushings plenty of cleaning that needs to be done these coilovers they're just not going to cut it and then we need to go through and address any area that needs to be painted so that we can finally put this motor into the chassis for hopefully fingers crossed the last time
the one thing with RX-7s is that the ball joints are not serviceable. So we wanted to get these apart, get the dust boots off of them, which were in very poor shape, and we should be able to get replacements for those. The actual ball joints themselves feel fine. They have a little bit of resistance to them. They're not just flopping around. That's what we want to see, though, because I don't want to go through the effort of replacing them. It looks like the drift guys over the years have come up with some solutions, but there is machining involved with the control arms, and if we can get away with leaving the OEM ball joints in there, that is the route that I would like to go. As far as the actual hub here, we are going to be putting some extended ARP wheel studs in there, and then we'll go ahead and see if we can get a hold of an OEM wheel bearing. The spindle itself, there's really nothing here. We're just inspecting for damage. As long as it's good to go, it just needs to be cleaned and have everything bolted back onto it. So we'll go ahead, we'll get the driver's side apart, make sure that we don't have any issues with the ball joints on that side, and then we will bust out the press and get to work. I do think it will be much easier to bolt the suspension together with everything in the car versus the way that we took it apart on the bench. We have a lot of new components, a lot of stuff that's cleaned up. I don't want to scratch anything up and it feels like a big step here, probably because the car is still pretty much a bare shell, but I think it's time to put the motor in. Believe it or not, the motor was one of the original things taken care of in this build by a local machine shop probably almost two years ago now. It is a unique combination of parts though, with a 6.2 liter LSA bottom end and rotating assembly, crank, rods, pistons, all from the LSA, with a set of 243 cathedral port heads and an LS6 intake manifold. And the theory there is that combined with the comp custom grimed boost spec cam, that this thing should make a good amount of low end torque until the supercharger gets into its efficiency range and starts to make some power. I thought I could do it with the supercharger on, but it does not look like it's gonna clear the frame rail. And the last thing we're doing is scratching this brand new engine bay. Hopefully now it is evident why this project has taken this long. And there was some procrastination, there was some sitting around on the car, but there also was a lot of work that needed to be done in the engine bay. As timeless and beautiful as the exterior 
of an FDRX7 is the engine bay is far from that. It is small. There is a lot to cram into a very tight area. There's a lot of stamped metal, a lot of holes that once you delete a lot of the stock systems you no longer need. So for that reason, I think that it is 100% worth the time to go through, smooth everything out, really the tops of the shock towers, the fronts of the shock towers are the really, really big areas. And then back here into the firewall makes the world of difference once everything is bolted back into this engine bay. I'm finding it difficult not to just bolt all of the beautiful fabrication work that Josh has already done into the front end of this car with the intercooler and the radiator and all the associated plumbing but this is the first time in a long time that there has been more weight in the front end of this car than the back end of this car so I want to try and get it to balance out a little bit better which means that we can look into the fuel system and the gas tank this beautiful radium engineering in tank surge tank should be capable of providing all the fuel that we'll ever need with three e85 compatible Walboro 450s and then an additional 450 lift pump to feed the surge tank. I did assemble this some time ago, so I think it's worth a look. Double check everything that we did previously, and then we can get it put in the tank.
I certainly wasn't kidding earlier when I said I had to find all my parts because I had some at the house too. The nice thing about having these fabricated probably almost about two years ago now is that we can just bolt them right on the car. A big thanks to Kent Island Powder Coating for getting the rear subframe covered in a beautiful coat of gloss black. Now we can go ahead and assemble this entire rear end and get it put in the car. Won't be needing these anymore. You guys got or what? Want to go faster? 
Yeah, it clearly has a shitload of drag. Well, it's rolling, not under its own power, but it is moving. We definitely need to do a couple things alignment-wise on this, but from where we started at the beginning of this video, this thing has made massive, massive strides. And that's thanks to just a little bit of work put in over the past pretty much two years now. So a lot of this stuff was already figured out. In the next episode, we have to figure out the rest. It's going up to Josh's for the last round of fabrication. I have something special worked up for the exhaust, and we're going to be building a custom roll bar for this car, something I've had in my head for some something like 10 years now. I've never seen somebody execute one like this, and I think that it's gonna be pretty darn slick what we're gonna do with this thing. After that, it's figuring out the fuel system, taking care of the wiring, and tying up all the loose ends to get this thing to fire up for the first time since pretty much I have owned it. Bought this car not running, got it running to pull it into the shop to rip it apart. So needless to say, I am super excited to get this thing actually on the road and I'm very excited to be making some progress on it. Thank you everybody out there for tuning in and showing support as always. We appreciate it and I will see you in the next episode.